All right, um, welcome back. We're in a different location today. Uh, we are in my bathroom where I usually take my boots off. And we're gonna do boot maintenance. Now I try to do my boot maintenance about once a week, but oftentimes it gets about once every two weeks. You know how life goes. Um, yeah, I've got general tips and tricks. It's been a long day, so I was just hoping to record uh, my boot care process so that uh, anyone who's wondering can uh, take care of some nice boots. Now the boots I'm using are Thoroughgood Mock Toes. These specifically have the steel toe in them. They're the taller of the two. I think there's a short one that cuts off just above the heel and then this one which goes probably about three inches past my he or heel. I mean just above the ankle and then this one that goes about three or four inches past my ankle. Um, I love Thoroughgoods. They're my favorite boot. I've worn Red Wings. I don't they don't fit my feet as well, but I haven't worn tons of Red Wings. I had a pair of double, or triple H's that I really liked. Um, but they're a little out of my price range anymore, and I don't know anywhere that sells them. So, Thorough Goods are kind of my boot of choice anymore. Carolinas, they're a good boot. I, uh, I've worn a lot of, or two or three pairs of the Carolina Metatarsal. Wonderful boot. If you get them, just take care of them. Make sure to oil down past the metal or behind the metatarsal. But other than that, they're a really nice boot. I'm a welder fabricator by trade, so um, I burn these boots. I walk on hot steel. I drop sparks on them. I climb. I jump. I do things I'm generally not supposed to do. Um, but. Thoroughgoods have always had my back. Carolinas have always been a very good boot. Um, and generally, there's one boot company I will not buy from ever again, and that's Wolverine. Those boots were no good for me. Build quality was horrible. The um, actual fit was bad. The leather quality was trash. So from build and material, they just weren't good boots, and I wouldn't recommend them to anyone getting into the trades, or frankly, anyone at all. Um, but as I said, Carolinas, Thorough Goods, those are good boots. Now, I have a lot of friends who swear by Red Wings. Again, I've had a pair. I'm not sure I would uh, go back. I tend to like the Thorough Goods because they're very similar. They end up having very similar boot constructions. And I just like the Thorough Goods. I'm not really sure why. They just fit my feet a little better. So, end of the day, it's all personal preference. But I'm hoping to show you how to take care of nice boots when you get them. Uh, these cost me about 200 bucks, Or, uh, well, I should say, my mother was very kind to me and uh, <laughs> replaced my last pair of boots. And I'm very thankful. So, I want to make sure these boots last me a year or two. Um, so this is how I take care of them. Again, I do it about once a week if I'm lucky, once every two weeks. If not, and if I'm being particularly bad, once every three or four weeks. But as long as you're oiling them at some sort of interval, they should last you a lot longer than if you weren't. Um, I know there are some cobblers that will probably say I'm oiling them too much, but in my industry, the dry, dusty shops, um, having too much oil is a little better than not enough because... They dry out, they'll start cracking around the toes and around the heel or the ankle. And uh, then I'm in a world of trouble because there's no getting it back from cracking. So I don't want it to crack, so I'm going to overall the boots. But hopefully uh, you guys can see my process and um, learn something from it. So I'll get you when I'm, uh, I'm going to cut the camera down and uh, start working on my boots. This is just water I'm using right now. 
just trying to pull the dirt out of the laces. Um, I find laces last a little longer when uh, you just clean them up a little. I know one one older gentleman who used to um, petroleum jelly his laces to keep the sparks off them. I don't know if that works. I've never really tried it. But it's not a bad idea, in my opinion. Now, my little flag, looking a lot cleaner. If I was feeling particularly froggy, I would uh, take a toothbrush to that flag, but it's late, it was a long day. Um, it was a good day. Just not feeling super deep cleany. Just wanna do a quick and dirty oiling video for you. That way, uh, you know, pretty much the bare minimum there is to know. And not too much. Because uh, nobody wants to get off work and have to do things for work. And it kind of sucks, but I'd rather be doing this now than paying a couple hundred. I don't know. Got some slag on these laces. They're not long for this world. So that's okay. Maybe I'll make a video about how I replace my laces because I don't I don't go and buy new shoelaces. I gut paracord and then I run that through as laces because I find that the nylon paracord is made out of is fairly good at self-healing from burns. So it won't rip or tear, it'll just, it'll melt it, but it'll still be a usable lace for a long time. Now, all right, see, nice and clean. Put that over here. Now to start on the actual boots. Now I do use a little bit of water on my boots just to get the massive stuff out. But before I do that with the water, I've got to take my brush, which is just one of the bigger brushes I cut in half. I've got to just try to get as much dust and dirt off that I can. Just so I'm not oiling over top of dirt. Obviously this is not going to get it perfectly clean. But it's a start. And if I can get most of the dust off it, then I don't have to wash as much off with the water. I believe saddle soap is the correct thing to use, but I don't often bother with saddle soap. I've, from the one time I've used it, it broke the leather in so it was too soft. And uh, my boots wore out a little faster than I would have liked. Just because of how soft the uh, leather got. However, I do know people who use it. And it's not gonna ruin your boots. It's just not what I've found works the best for me. Kind of just wiping. I'm not really scrubbing. I'm just kind of wiping. Got a little paint on this one. Ain't no big deal. I know I got some anti-seize on this one down at the toe region. And you can see all the little burns on the top of the boot. I'll show you how I kind of take care of those. I'm getting the tongue. I don't know if using the water rehydrates the boot much, but I wouldn't rely on it solely to rehydrate the boot. I feel like it might dry it out faster. Using water alone. Um, just want to make sure you get as much dirt off it before you start oiling it. 
Now, obviously, don't dunk the boots in water, and I wouldn't run them under a faucet or anything, but just a wet bandana. And a little bit of elbow grease should do just fine at getting some of the dirt out. Tongue real quick. This is not a short little process when I oil my boots. I make sure I get them as clean as I can. Oh boy, look at all that stuff falling off. Down in here in the corners, down in here and here, uh, a lot of stuff gets built up and I'm not sure how to remedy it, but just kind of got to go in after it every now and again. A lot of grind dust, a lot of um, metal shards and metal splinters. Just stuff that builds up and can't be very good for the boots. So, now I'll take the dry side of my cloth and just kind of, whichever one I'm going to oil first, I'm just going to kind of take any of the dampness off it before I start oiling. And no, I don't often clean the soles of my boots. So there might be some stuff down here. I just don't find a need to clean it. The soles are probably the most robust thing on these boots. And when they wear out, I take them to the cobbler to to get resold. As long as the upper is still good, I will have a boot resold two or three times before I buy a new one. If I can get away with it. But that's not always the case. Especially when you're wearing them for work every day. Okay. So now we're going to move on to conditioning. This is just the Kiwi conditioning oil. Um, you can get this stuff at Walmart. It's maybe not the best oil I've ever found for it, but... It's cheap. It's five bucks for a big old can, and I use a good amount of it. I've also used coconut oil. I don't know how, what like leather experts think of that, but I have used coconut oil. It has worked in a pinch, and it's pretty cheap. Um, I wouldn't use like vegetable or any of those liquidy oils. Uh, coconut oil is kind of a cream, and uh, I know people use it on their skin, so I figured for leather it'd be fine, and in a pinch it does work, but. This stuff's probably much, this is your go-to. It's cheap, it's accessible, like I said, they sell it at Walmart. And uh, I have had zero issues using it. There are better leather creams out there, I guarantee it. Kiwi is not the best polish company, by far. But, quick, easy, dirty, like I said, these are my work boots. I don't want to spend any more money than I have to on them, but I do want to make sure I'm not spending more money on boots than I have to, so i got to spend a little money now to save some money later. Okay, So, I got myself a little rag full of cream, and I'm going to start around the toe, around the side of the toe here. I'm just going to work it in. I'm going to leave it glossy. I'm going to need more. These are sucking it up already. I'm going to leave a nice little sheen of oil on it. That'll be important. Okay. Now that I'm done with the outside of the toe, I'm going to go onto the top. I'm going to work it into these burns. That's real important. If you got burns on your boots, you got to work that oil into the burns. Because that burn makes a divot, and you need to make sure that oil is coating that entire divot. Takes a little bit of patience, but you don't want that drying out your boot. Then I usually go on to the tongue. Now the tongue is not nearly as important to me. Tongues kind of get messed up, but for the most part they are covered. You just got to make sure it's pliable. So a thin layer of oil on the tongue is all it really needs. But 
You don't need to leave it glossy like you did the rest of the boot. You can see the gloss on there. It's kind of shiny, kind of like a dull shine. And as you can see, I'm reloading my cloth every couple of scrubs. I'm moving on to the side, this whole side here. I want to start right where my ankle sits. Make sure that gets the most amount of oil. Work my way around. Stopping where this heel seam is. I work in sections of the boot. That way I don't miss any section of the boot. And then I'm going to get in between my speed laces. The light's a little wonky in here tonight. I'm going to make sure I get the heel cup nice and good. Like I said, just leaving it glossy. If you were to run your finger over it, you'd feel a slight wetness, but I'm not soaking it. So now I'm going to get this heel, the heel strap. I'm going to make sure to work it in to each little wrinkle back here. Because those wrinkles mean that that's where my foot is flexing and that's where the boot is giving to my ankle. So I need to make sure those are nice and uh, nice and moisturized so they can keep flexing because if they harden up they'll start cracking right there because that's where it's flexing it's like dry skin you don't get dry skin just on the random well you might but oftentimes it'll be on your elbow or your knuckles or your uh, cuticles you get dry skin right where the the flesh is flexing so you want to make sure any spot where you see wrinkles or divots or you can tell is just moving because when my foot is walking it's doing this to the leather so I want to make sure it's getting plenty of moisture where it needs to be now I'm on to the other side now putting your hand in here I just for this side of the boot I just kind of hook my hand in like this when I was doing the other stuff kind of put my hand in the bottom of the boot and flared my fingers to hold on to the boot You'll kind of figure out what works for you, but I like putting my hand inside the boot. It's a little gross, don't get me wrong, but so are my nasty feet. So Then, once I've got this whole thing oiled, I'm going to set it down and let it rest while I am oiling the other one. So now, I'll move on to the other one. Like I did on the other one, I'm going to start on the toe, the outside of the toe box. Just kind of oil it, working it in there. Making sure there's plenty down there because this is where most of the sparks hit. Is the very tippy toe of my boot. Because the rest is covered by denim from my overalls. So a lot of this boot gets spared the sparks. But the very tip toe, where my steel toe is, and back about an inch or two, that doesn't get spared. That's getting the sheer, the straight blast of fire and molten steel and grind dust and all the other shit that I deal with. So I want to make sure it's nice and oiled up so that when that fire hits it, it gives the leather a fighting chance. Now I'm doing the tongue. Like I said, just kind of a quick and dirty, get it nice and moisturized, but not worrying about keeping it glossy. Also, your sweat gets to the tongue a lot, so that I, I would have to imagine the sweat is keeping that spot moisturized pretty well. As you can tell, you can move pretty quick when you know what you're doing. I'm not explaining as much now, so I'm able to move a lot quicker. Oh, clumsy. And now I got oil on my thumb, so my thumb is slipping. <laughs> this stuff is pretty slick. I can't stress to you guys enough that the ankle portion of your boots needs as much oil as you can let it soak in because your ankle especially on boots that go well above your ankle like these do they're going to be flexing and moving and twisting and forming with your body if you don't keep that moisturized it's going to wear in and it's going to wear out so you got to make sure that leather's 
drinking deep of this oil. Because if it's not, you'll get some real brown, dark, or real light brown tan kind of discolorations, and then they'll start to crack. And like I said, when they crack, you can do certain things to save them. But as soon as they start cracking, it's not worth, you're, you're not going to get your money's worth out of them. Unless it's 10, 12 years old. And then maybe you would. Alright, so, as you can see, the second one took like no time at all. I am going to hold on to that cloth. Cap my conditioning oil. Wipe sweat off my brow because our AC broke and uh, it's getting a little warm tonight. So, you know. Now, I'm just letting the boots set. You see, I got both my boots here still. They're still kind of shiny, glossy. I'm going to let them set. I'm going to give them about 5-10 minutes. I'm going to let them soak in that oil, but pull in as much moisture as they can. And then we'll come back to it. All right. See you. All right. While we're sitting here, I'm eating some Twizzlers. I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd just impart some wisdom that was given to me when I started. Here, let me readjust the camera a little. Well, oh, that's as far as you go. Uh, just a little information that was given to me when I started, and uh, invest in some good boots. As you can see, I'm kind of sweating. It's getting warm in here. Uh, but, invest in some good boots. Once you start having foot problems, you're not really going to be able to stop having foot problems. And, uh, I can attest to that. I have a bunion on one of my toes, and uh, it, or on my big toe on my right foot, and it hurts like hell some days. But, having good boots makes it hurt a whole lot less. But, if you buy good boots, and you treat your feet right... Your feet will probably last you a lot longer. At least that's what all the old timers tell me. Because uh, a lot of them have foot problems. You're standing on your feet all day. You're walking around. You're squatting on your toes. You're going on the balls of your feet. You're, uh, you're sitting on your ankles. Or you're getting into weird positions. And uh, they can mess up your feet. So... Least you can do is buy some good boots. Now, I'm not gonna say like a certain price point, it's gonna qualify it as a good boot, but if you go into work every day and the old timers are all wearing uh, Red Wings, maybe there's something to that. Maybe they realize that Red Wings are a good boot. If you go in and everyone's wearing Thorough Goods, Carolinas, and nobody's wearing Wolverines, maybe there's something to that. But I'm not saying Wolverines are bad. They may work for you. They did not work for me. At all. Um, but don't just go to Walmart. I get it. If you just need a pair of boots to get you the next paycheck, go to Walmart. Pick a pair or two. You know, get to that paycheck so you can get a better pair of boots. In a lot of shops, they uh, they keep an allowance for you. So, every year... Every year you get $150 for boots. Figure out what your shop does. Because a lot of places they give an allowance. Or they'll have the Granger truck come and you can go pick up a pair of boots off of there. I know Granger's got Carolinas. I think they only have the Metatarsal one. They got a couple Thorough Goods, but I don't think they got the Leather Thorough Goods. They got some Iron Ages. Those were good. Those were cheap. And I liked those decently. They were just a knockoff Carolina. They didn't last me nearly as long. But uh, they were definitely good boots. They didn't hurt my feet at all. They were comfortable. Just figure out how to take care of your feet. I I soak my feet in Epsom salt every now and again. If I feel like I'm... Man, I'm really sweating now. If I feel like I'm getting an athlete's foot or something, I'll soak my feet in Epsom salt or... Um, really just sit down and wash between my toes and stuff. I know it sounds gross, but... Gotta take care of your feet and clip your toenails. Clip your toenails. <laughs> If you know, you know, and if you haven't clipped your toenails in a while, go grab a nail clipper and clip your toenails because it saves you some foot pain. Whether or not you notice it, once you clip your toenails, you'll realize how much how much less pain there is in your feet through the day. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. I'll get back to uh, 
to doing my oil and then finish up my night. All right. All right. Finished up my Twizzler. And my boots are done sitting. So now I take my brush again. And yeah, you might want two different brushes. I don't really seem to have any issues with it. But a brush for getting the dirt off it and a brush for the conditioner may be a good idea. That's why I cut this in half originally. But I used the other one so much it started falling apart so I threw it away. Anyway, how I do it, I'll set it on my knee and I'll just give it long strokes with the brush all up the side. I really just push that oil into it really just get that oil into it now that it's had time to sit just scrub 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 the same rotation that you were doing just scrub 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 long strokes around the toe right at the tip of the toe just get some strokes on top I do circles for my top of the toe really working into some of them burns working into the threads on the mock toes so there's on mock toes there are these threads and I try to get it real good in there just like that I do not usually brush the tongue I like to leave that just a little tacky that's why I didn't put nearly as much on here because any sparks that land on my laces are going to burn my tongue too so I want a little bit more on here I do a little extra for the top of the toe, which I'll show you in a bit, but now on to the other one. Good brush. Really working it into the ankle. Up and down on the heel strap, around the back. And long strokes around the toe. The reason I do long strokes around the toe is because the toe is the only thing that's really going to be seen. I don't want to see like big swirly oil marks or anything. So I try to get it all going roughly the same way. The very top of the toe is different. It doesn't show those marks as bad. And then I don't do my tongues. So. The next question is, well, what if I get a big old scuff or a cut in my boot? For that, that's when I break out the actual polish. Up until now, we've just been using conditioning oil. Shoe polish is just a wax. Oh, a little bit fell out. It's just a wax. There's no conditioner. This is going to dry your boots out. That's why you got to oil them. So the oil's in there now. So now if I need to do some color correction, like there's a big white gash on the front where I uh, dropped apart. I can do that now. There's even a little bit of paint on one of these boots, which is what I'm going to use this for now. I'm going to cover that up just kind of more or less for me from a visual standpoint. I want to look good when I'm at work, so I got to put in the time now. Now, because this is a wax, I've found that this protects the toes of my boots from sparks a little better. Simply because it's a wax, you know. It puts another layer between the leather and the fire. So if I drop a spark on my boot, that wax may give it like a split second to cool down before it hits the leather. And for me, it's worked so far, so I'm gonna keep doing it. So how you apply this, again, you can use a different cloth or you can use the same rag. I usually just try to find a clean part of that rag. A Little bit of finger. How I've been gripping it this whole time is I just put my finger in it and then I use my other fingers to tension it. That way I've got a nice little pocket for my finger, see? I'm gonna pop this open. Now, I'm not sure if this is where the term spit shine comes from, but I put a little spit on the tip of my finger. Well, that was a lot more than I thought. And then I just kinda get it going. The little bit of water helps. You can use like a glass of water if you don't feel comfortable spitting. I understand. I'm not going to tell nobody. But, then I get myself a nice little brown spot. And on the outside. Oh, maybe I lied. Anyway, there's no paint that I can find, so I'm going to put 
nice thin layer of polish up here on top of my boot. Now I don't do around the edge on my boots. I don't find that gets too much abuse, but I do put a lot right on the top of my boot, right where all those sparks land. Now some weeks I don't do this at all. I feel that it kind of just handles itself and it wears itself out. And when I feel like it's worn itself out, you can see it's a little darker right there. When I feel like it's worn itself out, then I stop and I redo it. But not every week do I put polish on my boots. I'm not like in the Air Force or the Navy or anything where they want them like mirror shined, you know. As you, well, I just covered it because force of habit, but there was a nick in the top of my boot here, right here. And I just rubbed that brown polish in. And now you can't even tell there was a nick in there. Then we're just kind of, kind of spread it out on the very top of my boot. Now, if you have white threads, like the uh, very top threads of this boot were white at one point, if you do this polish thing, they're going to turn brown. There's not really a way to save that. I'm sorry. But it's not really a concern of mine for my work boots. I don't put much. I just put enough to give it a little bit of protection from the fire. And I put it away. You can over polish. So there's a thing called, uh, I believe it's called parade gloss. If you want to get your boots like a mirror shine, go and get that parade gloss. This for like church shoes or nice dress shoes, this is only supposed to give it a slight shine, this brown stuff. And it's supposed to take care of scuffs or other discolorations you get from wearing like church, church shoes around. The only reason I'm using it on my boots is because it gives an extra layer of protection on top of the oil. And I don't do this all the time. But if I get a cut, if I accidentally drop a part on my boot and it cuts the leather, you can kind of pack this in there to, to change the color back to brown or black or whatever your boots are. Um, you can change it back to that color and uh, you won't be able to see it as much plus that cut open leather will be protected from the elements a little more and you might be able to salvage another a while a long while out of your boot that way you just got to make sure you're taking care of them now for the polish once it's dried and kind of hardened once my little bit of spittle kind of wore off it i'm going to just take a cloth and just gently it's hard to see and there might be better videos for this part. But you just kind of gently just nurture it in there so that you don't see the streaks of polish as much. And it just kind of blends in. Uh, again, this is not how I would do dress shoes. In fact, how I do dress shoes is very different. Um, it involves a nicer cloth than this. It involves a lot more patience, a little more time, a lot more sparkle. It's shiny when I'm done with it, essentially. This is just simply to give myself a little bit extra on top. As you can see, these boots are well worn, but they don't look old. All right, that's it. Again, put it in the comments if you have any questions. And uh, if you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. Um, I don't want to pressure you or anything, but liking and subscribing is a great thing to do for me. I think I'm at like 10 subscribers now, which is amazing. Thank you all. And uh, have a good night. I hope your day goes better than mine did. Take care.